Hallelujah. The song says, come on and see about me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I need him to see about me. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank you. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord once again. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's all right to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's just so good to be in the house of the Lord. It's so good to be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Because the Lord says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Because the dead can't praise him. But while I'm yet alive, I will bless the name of the Lord. I will declare his goodness. For he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. The devil might be mine, but I don't care. God deserves the praise. As the song said earlier, I'm glad to be in the service. Because he didn't have to let me live. But because of his grace and his mercy, he has spared me another day. And I need to let him know I appreciate that day. Life, health, and strength. Every moment that we have, we ought to be great. Because the next breath ain't promised to. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I thank God, hallelujah, for all of them that have come to the house of God. I thank God for all that's got online. And I appreciate you for knowing why you're online, why you're in the house of God. You didn't come in for observance, but you came in to worship your Lord and say, you came in to give his name the praise, the glory, and the honor. I hope you got online to bless the name of the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you. And while you're yet standing, praise God. We bless the Lord for our sister uh, Dolores back there. Praise God. God allowed her to get back to the house of God. We see the prayers at work. So good to have the presence in the house. Amen. For our God is always moving. Yes. Praise God. And we just need to let him know we thank him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's all. Yes. That is all. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, if we truly understood. Yes. If we truly understood. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You'd already be ready when you hit the door. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you. Thank you. While you're yet standing, if you have your word, go with me to Joshua, the fifth chapter. Praise God. We're going to start down at verse 12. Joshua 5, beginning at verse 12. Praise God. And it reads, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Joshua chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. Then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna. But they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, 
take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter 6. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in, and the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Praise God. Let us go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered, that the word will fall on good soil, that it may take root and produce the fruit that you desire. The word that you send, God, the enemy shall not steal, but it will remain that it might do that that you desire. Lord, we invite you to do what you will as you yes, will. Yes, and we yes. thank you for what you've already you, done Father. and all that you're about to do. You, for God, you have free course and your word have free course. In the name of Jesus, we declare it to be so and bless thy name with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As I begin to... Think about this particular uh, passage of scripture and begin to, to meditate on it. Praise God. The, I guess the, the, if I had to use for a topic or what was resonating in my spirit as we read this passage of scripture, I would say that just at the point of crossover or transition, just at the point of crossover or transition, you see, we know the story. Moses was leading the children out of Egypt, Egypt, and they was on their way to the promised land. But to get to the promised land, God took them through the desert. Right. And we know the story. They wandered around in the desert for 40 years. Yes. Praise yes. God. And it got to a point that after the 40 years and God began to work with them, praise God, because during that 40 years, he had to teach them how to trust him. Yes, yes. He had to teach them and show them that their disobedience yes. caused the delay in them going to the promised land. Amen. And as we begin to reflect on this message this morning, just at the point of crossover or transition, whatever you want to use, praise God, I want you to see what the word of God is showing us Moses took the folk as far as he could take them. Praise God. And because God was doing something, praise God, he had to switch from Moses because Moses has his hand filled with them hard-headed folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disobedient folk. Amen. He giving them what the Lord said, telling them what the Lord is instructing, and they still want to do their own thing. Yeah. But because God had promised that he was going to take them to the promised land. Mm -hmm. They had to keep going and Moses had to keep leading. Amen. In spite of the disobedience and the hard head. Yes. There's some points that we need to learn in, in this passage here. Praise God. In spite of what's happening in your life. Mm -hmm. In spite of what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And somebody is always hindering or blocking or something is always going on to try to discourage you, you got to still keep moving toward the promised land that God has spoken in his word. Praise God. And as Moses began to carry the folk, they got on him and worried him so bad. And when God spoke to him, when they was out there talking about uh, we out here in this wilderness and, and, and you brought us out here to die and we ain't got no water going through the desert and, and all of what's going on. They just complaining and murmuring and Moses just trying to do what the will of God asked him to do is to lead the people from Egypt. Because when they was in Egypt and in bondage, they were crying out for God to deliver. When he sent the, saint, when he sent the deliverer, praise God, then they started complaining because they didn't like the way they were being delivered. It's just like that. Sometimes I don't care what you do. You just can't satisfy some folks. Praise God. 
And if you move according to people, you'll never do nothing. Right. You might as well sit down and not get up because folk will turn on you every which way. Right. They tell you to go this way, you go that way. Why are you going that way? Well, didn't you just tell me to go that way? <laughs> they find fault in everything. But the word tells us that while they was in Egypt, they used to eat the, uh, what's that thing? Um, mm. Hold on here. Leet. Yeah, that's what they was eating. All of that good stuff, right? Well, that's all they had to eat then. <laughs> Praise God, because that's all Pharaoh was letting them have. Praise God. But when they got up in the desert, they talking about, well, at least we was having them onions and Greek uh, leeks and whatever that stuff you call them they were eating out there. We at least had that in there. We out here. Now we ain't got nothing in this desert. So God, uh, Moses went to the Lord and, and let them know that the people are hungry. They want something to eat. Praise God. So when they were in Egypt, which represented when they were in bondage, they were eating the leeks and the onions and garlic. That's what they were eating, okay? So now they're in the desert, and they say there ain't no food. So Moses had to go pray for some food to come in the desert. So what did God do? Out of his grace and his mercy, he rained manna down from heaven. Now manna represents uh, a type of food, praise God. So that meant they went from the leeks and the onions and garlic now to manna. Now, you see, God is changing the diet along the way. Because, see, when they was in bondage in Egypt, they got used to eating them onions, garlic, and the leeks. They got used to that. Because anything you eat long enough, you train your body to be able to put up with it, and you get used to it, and, and it goes on. Now that they got used to that, God was trying to deliver them, and he changed the diet, got them out there in the wilderness. Now they had to do something different. And so when they started getting out there, they were complaining about what they didn't have. And so he let the manna come down. And when they got the manna, they didn't know what it was. But Moses, God gave Moses the instructions on how they were supposed to gather the manna, how much they were supposed to gather, and how to eat it and all of that, and what to do. And so they started to eat, and that gave them some little food. But first, they just had the manna. Then talking about, we ain't got no meat out here. <laughs> so then he said, OK. Hey. Send them some quails out there so they can have some meat to eat. Then they had manna and quail. Yes, sir. Praise God. Then a little while later, we out here, we ain't got no water. Yeah. You're in the desert. Ain't no water in the desert. But if you want some water, God can supply the water in the desert. So instead of complaining, you should have been asking and praising God for showing them where the water was under the ground. But they complained. So Moses had to go to God about the water. And God told him where the water was and hit the rock, but they done got on Moses' word, on his, on his nerves so bad, he just hit the rock. Woo! Here come the water. They got the water, though. Praise God. So that was that second type of dike. Now Moses had went because part of the reason was Moses let the folk get on his nerves. But if you read your history, it said it was some millions of people out there. And can you imagine all the folk complaining? Because it don't take but one or two to get on your nerve to complain all the time because some of you know somebody like that. Every time you come in their presence, ain't nothing right. They start as soon as they see you before they say good morning, good evening. Let me tell you, child, what's going on? And then they start running off all that negative mess. You're like, Lord, why did I have to run across them today? It seemed like I could have went another way. So you can imagine what one or two do when they complaining all the time and getting on your nerve. Imagine millions of them, just like that chatter going on in your ear. You're like, Lord, I'm tired of this. I know you called me to bring these folk on up out of here. But if you want to, you can let the herb open up and take them. You know, I mean, you know, it, it'll be all right. Because they, they, they the one doing the complaint. I'm trying to do what you asked me to do, and they yet still complaining and still letting me do what you called me to do. 
You asked, they wanted to come out of Egypt. They were crying for you to bring them out. Now you got them on the way out of Egypt, and you already promised. I'm taking you to a promised land, to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. You will have it like you never had it before. Now, they couldn't see the picture of they were going to a land with milk and honey. All they could see was what was happening right there in front of them while they was in that hot, dry desert, and they started complaining about what they were seeing and what they was experiencing instead of praising about what was promised. God said we've been called to walk by faith and not by sight. He knows what's going on. Don't you think he knows you're in the desert? Don't he think you know your bank account, love? Know your health ain't what it ought to be? But he said, I am Jehovah Rock. I am the Lord thy God that heals you. I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord thy God, thy provider. And so instead of looking to him as the provider and as the healer, you talking about what you ain't got and how broke you are and how bad you feel. <laughs> okay. Moses done got frustrated. So God said, okay, I'm going to let you get them up to a certain point. But now, Joshua, your right hand, he's going to have to take them on over because I can't let you go over into the promised land with them. But you will take them right to the point. So the word says in verse 12. He says, then the manna ceased on that day after they had eaten the produce of the land. Right. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. They were right there getting ready to cross over. You see, they done got comfortable now because they had quail, they had manna, and now they had water. They were getting used to it time they got used to it, God says, you had a point of transition now, crossover, getting ready to change again. What he's trying to show us in the word is that God is trying to teach us how to stay in line with him and in touch with him and to understand that when we're getting ready or when God is ready to take us over, we're going to come at a point that is transitional or time to cross over. And we kind of like, okay, Lord, well, what do I do? I'm kind of like right here. I don't know whether to go left. I don't know whether to go right. I ain't quite sure what's going on here. But I know something is happening. I feel like you're doing something. But I just ain't quite sure what it is. And if you do a little reading, they said that manna in the Hebrew kind of stood for uh, kind of what is it? You know, it, it's meeting your need. And they felt pretty good about the manna because they were at least eating. Yeah. But it says that the Hebrew meaning or Greek of it is, what is it? Because you couldn't describe it. They ain't had no manna before. But ain't that like God to have you doing something you ain't done before? Because he want to know, do you trust him or what you're looking at? He's the one providing. It came from him. You might not know what, he know what it is if it came from him. He sent it. What God is helping us to understand is God got more than one way to, to help get religious folk in line. He kind of lets you know, I done told you over and over and again, I'm in control, not you. You can think you're handling everything, but when you think you got it figured out, I'm getting ready to flip the switch. It's going to be something different. Because God got to let everybody know who's in charge Amen. in his way so that you will see that I got to trust the Lord in spite of what I think I know and what I'm supposed to do. Amen? Amen. And so it said that now they had gotten to the point because they was right there before crossing over. But once they got through Jericho, they'd be over in the promised land. But guess what? Verse 6 says, they got right there. Jericho here, they were coming. Sealed up the city, said nobody in, nobody out. But here they are, got to go through Jericho to get over in Cain. What God's showing you? Man might have closed up, 
but God got a connection on the inside. Now, you know, the principle in this word, because y'all know I deal with principles from God's word a whole lot. Now, God said, I'm taking you to the promised land. First of all, you got to understand from the word, God says, I'm not a man that I shall lie. So the bottom line is, I'm going to the promised land. Even though I can't figure out how I'm getting there, because God spoke it, I'm on my way to the promised land. So first of all, when God gives us the word, we got to know that God ain't no man that he's going to lie. So when he gave the word, that's a done deal. Yes. But what he's telling me is, I got to press on in faith and quit trying to figure out how I'm going to get over there. I just got to obey and move as you direct my steps. Lord, For the Lord. steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So whatever I got to go through, where I got to step, God is directing those steps. I just need to hear what he's saying and follow his direction. So they're getting ready and get right there to, to Jericho. They're right there about ready to cross over. And it said, now Jericho, shut up. Verse 6, now Jericho. When it says, now Jericho, what that was saying is, everything that happened before that, now we got to deal with Jericho. They're right at the point of crossover. What God was saying was, you are at that point of crossover. You're getting ready to cross over. So don't give up now because you're right there. Amen. Just because the door shut where you thought you was about to step into. Right. You see, some of you, 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 you know, let's, let's bring it on down to 2023. <laughs> You've been struggling and you've been doing a whole lot of things and now it looks like the light is coming through. Mm -hmm. You're getting ready to get a breakthrough. Maybe that new job or that new business or whatever you wanted is beginning to, to peek open a little bit. And you're about to begin to say, oh, I can see my way now. By the time you get ready to see your way, you start heading that way, you get news. We put a freeze on that. We ain't high. We changing this. We changing that. You like, man, I got right there. Now they're gonna change the rules on. You got a decision to make. Complain about them changing the rule, or praising God and say, okay, now Lord, which way now? All right. What you doing right now? Lord. I know you're still working, and I'm gonna praise you right now. Yeah. Because I'm getting to the promised land. Are you getting ready to take me around Jericho? Or how are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, you said, I'm going to the promised land. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we have to make a decision. Thank you, Lord. Do we change what we run into? Come on. Or do we say, God, you're still in control. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're still on the throne. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which way do I step now? What I do next? And when he speaks, you do that. But God already had it set up. Even though Jericho shut up, wouldn't let none in and none out. Verse 6, chapter 6, verse 1. God had Rahab, the prostitute, on the inside. When the spies got there, praise God, she let them in. She knew that they were them Israel. See, they already done heard what God been doing for Israel all along the way. So they were terrified to start with. So when they showed up, Rahab took him in, and she was taking a chance because Jericho had some mighty men of valor, and they were a fortified city with the walls all around it. Praise God. And when they shut up, want nothing going in and nothing going out. That's how secure that they thought it was. But that's a lesson for us to understand. I don't care how secure or how powerful man think they might want to be. If God says you got to go through that door, God going to open that door. Yeah. Ain't no need of you getting discouraged and holding your head down. You got to remember who you belong to and what he said to you. Yes. Yes. And when you understand what was spoken unto you and who you are in him, mm -hmm. and to realize that it's in him that I live, move, and have my being. There ain't a fortified wall can stop me at that time. Because God will move the wall. But nevertheless, Rahab took him in and she hid him 
because some of the people from the city saw these three strangers going into her house. And they, they went and told the king, and the king sent the guards to go to the house and look for them. And she told them where to hide at in the place. And when she come, they couldn't find them, and they went on their way, but they were right there. And what she said to them, she says, when y'all come to destroy this land, can you remember me and my family? And so what they told them, they said, tell you what we're going to do. You make sure that none of your folk get outside the house when we come in here. And you put that scarlet rope outside. And when we see that rope, everybody that's in that house with you, they're going to be secure because you saved us, you spared us, you're going to be spared. But everything else in the city, we're going to wipe out. Putting it in plain English for you. Praise God. But he said, if they outside when we come through, Ain't no help for them. You better tell them they better stay in place. See, you can't be too quick to jump and think you know what you're doing. You better hear from somebody else that heard from the Lord if you ain't heard yourself and act on it. Because he says if they out, we can't spare them. But if they in here with you and we see that scarlet rope out there, we know to protect that, that household. You and your family, y'all will be saved. And just as the word was spoken, when it was time for them to go in, they went in and followed God's instruction of going around that city until the walls fell down and they was able to go in. But Rahab and her folk that was in that house with her, they all got spared to safety because she helped the people of God. What is that saying to us? Sometimes as saints, you know, we get too spiritual, I want to say, in a sense, or should I say too religious sometimes. Because God will use unconventional people and unconventional means sometimes. Everybody that's going to help you ain't necessarily in the church beside you. God can speak to who he want to speak to that will listen and be obedient and help you. Right. Because God has used the enemy a many times in the Bible to bless his people. Right. But if you so religious, come out. Well, they don't believe like I believe in. They go to that church down there, them folk down that church, they do this and they do that. Because they ain't doing it like you do it. Don't mean that they don't belong to the Lord. That's right. You ain't got no capitalization on the Lord. God calls who he will. He uses who he will. Now, you can miss your blessing because you so religious thinking that they can't tell me nothing because they're outside. Do you not understand that the world, you know, the Bible says that the, the men of the world are sometimes more wiser than the folk in the church. Business folk understand that. When they're trying to work a deal and they need something, they got sense enough to know I need some connection. But God will connect you with who you need to get you to the next place he's taking you. Amen. So you can't sit there and figure out, is this who I, to con I try to connect with who you want to connect instead of connecting with who God connected you or put in the path to be the one to help you get to where you want to go. Do you going to miss it? But the business world, they understand that. They, they go to these little uh, socials or whatever you want to call them and sit around and chit-chat and all of that. They build a relationship. And the funny thing about it is, sometimes they don't even like the folk they're talking to. But because they in that position that they feel might like be able to help them or open a door or speak to somebody on their behalf, they over there shaking hands and punching their little glasses together and just smiling <laughs> on the inside. They're like, Lord, will this thing soon be over because I'm tired of looking in their face. <laughs> but they see the big picture of where they're trying to go and that this might be the connection to get them that deal that they're looking for. Yeah. But church folk, and let me help you out just a little bit. 
God is always in control. But let me tell you something. God works through people. You can say, I don't need nobody but me and Jesus. You're sort of right and you're sort of wrong. Because he's going to work through somebody else. You just got to be willing to trust who he's working through and know that that's who he's working through and follow his lead. And his Holy Spirit is going to prompt you. Now, you don't go there trying to say, oh, I need this one and that. Now, nah, that might not be the one God used. Because nine times nine ten is always going to be opposite who you thought God was going to use to open the door. Do you think them men thought he was going to use a prostitute to get them in there? Ain't no way. Because I remember some folk feel like they can't sit down at the table and eat with somebody they ain't saved. <laughs> they got to only eat with saved folk all the time. Why are you going to win the folk that ain't saved if you can only associate with saved folk? The unsaved folk need to be able to see the love of God inside of you and you let the love. Now, that don't mean you're sitting there preaching and quoting a hundred scriptures. Because do you ain't going to win. And they'd be glad you go sit at the table somewhere else. God is a wise God. And we got to understand God's way don't go the way we think all the time. But that was their connection. Rahab was their connection to get them through Jericho. So God changed them again. So they went from the manna and the quails and all of that. And now he told them, he says, now Jericho, you're getting ready to cross over. And so when they cross over, he said, now your diet will be whatever you want to eat. Because he told them, Canaan land is a land flowing with milk and honey. See, when you're in bondage, that's all you have. And let me tell you, help you out a little bit too. And I tell folk all the time, you ain't got to try to impress me. I don't need you quoting a whole lot of scripture to Because you can quote all the scripture you want to. If it ain't in you, I know it ain't in you. Because you, they folk that quote scripture better than me. And I tell anybody right now, no, I can't quote the thing word for word most of the time unless God speak it out through me, but I know where it is and I know what it says. I know how to go get it and read it because if I can't quote it word for word, I know how to read it. So I go get it and read it. You might be able to quote it, give me chapter and verse from the old and the new. Don't mean a thing if you ain't implementing it. But what you have to understand that when God changes your diet, your success or your progress is tied to your discomfort. Because when it get upset, Come on. you either going to do something about it and start seeking God and find out which way he's going to go because now you can't control it. Or you're going to sit down and let it take you. But in God's situation, he always upsets the car so you will cry out to him, then he can deliver. He was trying to get you to yield on your own before he had to get it so uncomfortable for you. But because we feel so smart sometimes and want to help God out like he don't know what he's doing, we, we, we go on in and say, well, I got a little bit of education. Let, let, let me go down here and da 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 This is the way you do that. That ain't the way God said do it. So he let you go on and do it. He said, okay, they, they think they're so smart. I let them go ahead. You go in there, you make a mess for sure. <laughs> then you can't do nothing. You say, God, I done got in this mess. I need you to get, get me out. <laughs> and God can smile and say, that's what I've been waiting for. Amen. Now you're ready to give it to him, and then he show you how to get right on up out of it. But he let you go through it. So you now know I got to trust him because I can't do it. And so God opens that door. So understand that God got folk in place to help you get to your transitional level in spite of what's going on. And it ain't going to be the ones you think it's going to be all the time either. That's just the way God works. 
Amen. That's just the way he works. Praise God. Now, they're going on in to the promised land. He said, you're going into the land with milk and honey. And if you remember the passage when they got in, he let them know they were going to be enemies sitting on the other side of the gate in the land he was taking them in. So just because he opened up the door for land of milk and honey, don't mean it will sit down and cross your legs. You still had to fight because there were some enemies in there. But he says, I've already given it to you. And now you can have whatever you want because all the fruit, everything you there is milk and honey. So all the luxuries and all of that. But guess what? Moses carried the people so far that Joshua had to take them. Moses was like a symbolic of the law. The law pointed out all the faults and the wrong. But Joshua is a type of Jesus. And because Joshua was a type of Jesus, then that he represented the grace. And because of God's grace, you had to go through Jesus to get what you need. And I'm going to close on this right. I'm going to summarize this last. In number 17 chapter, when God was getting ready to select a high priest, praise God, he spoke and he told him, he said, now, what I need you to do is you go get 12 sticks, and on the 12 sticks you write the name of all the leaders of the tribe on those 12 sticks. You put them inside the altar thing and leave them for so many days. All the sticks dead, right? And he said, after the, the number of days when you go back, the one that is budding or beginning to sprout, that's the one that's going to be the leader. What God was trying to let us know, everybody has a potential to be a leader, but everybody's not a leader. But he also said, Joshua represented a type of Jesus. So he let Joshua know. He said, now when you go back and the one that's starting to bud, that tribe, that's going to be the one you select because he had the names of the leaders of the different tribes was on each of the 12 sticks. This is in Numbers 17 chapter. And so when he went back, Aaron's rod or stick beginning to bud and was beginning to sprout. And Aaron became the high priest. What that was showing was since Joshua represented the type of Christ, it's just a reminder to us that we are no longer under the law but under grace. We got to go through Jesus. And Jesus said in order to go through him is we must walk by faith and not by sight. It's not based on all the good and all the works that I can do, but it's based on my faith in the work that was done by Jesus. Because if any man tries to enter in any other way except through Jesus, he says, but he's nothing but a thief and a robber because the only way in legally is through Jesus. Yes. And to get through Jesus is by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so they're in the land of Canaan with milk and honey. But in order to eat the good of that land, they're going to have to exercise faith and work the ground and break it up to get what they desire. What God is saying to us as the body of Christ, you are at your point of transition. You've been comfortable long enough. I'm getting ready to make you even more uncomfortable right now because I need you to cross over. And when you cross over, you can walk into what I'm taking you into. But now you make the decision as to how well you prosper in the new land I give you. Because if you walk by faith and not by sight, you're going to have what I said you can have. But if you don't want to break the ground and move by faith, you just get some produce and some fruit, but you won't eat in the abundance because you're not willing to break the ground by faith. Because that that you look and staring you in the face look greater than what you are trying to reach out. But that's because God is saying, it's not you, but it's me that lives in you. For in me you live, you move, 
and you have your being. Everything that we do, we must remember that it's in him is where our strength comes. Because I can do all things through Christ, but in and of myself, I can do nothing. So I eat according to my faith. The word reminds us, so be it according to your faith. Because Jesus paid that price, and he says that if we have faith in the work that he did, his shed blood, and that he died and rose again, that he paid the penalty for our sin, so that when God the Father sees us, he don't see the filth that we are, but he sees the blood of Jesus, his only son, that was covering us, and that that blood was sufficient to pay the price that we could not pay. And because his son shed his blood, died for us and rose again, we're now part of his family. But in order to move in that family, it's up to us on how we will exercise our faith and eat the good of the land that he called us into. So ain't no need of looking and saying, God blessing this one. He ain't doing this for me. Your mouth right there done part of it right there. You're saying the wrong thing instead of giving God the praise. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Speak what God speaks. Understand that it's him that causes us to cross over and he wants us to cross over. But it's going to take our faith to cultivate the land to receive that that we need. Some here and some online, you may be at that crossover right now. All God is saying is, I've already given you my word. What I need for you to do is walk according to my word. It's your faith. Not in how you feel, not in what you think, but what do my words say about what you're dealing with. Which means sometimes you're going to still have to change some folk. Because as I told you earlier, you got some folk, they're going to complain about everything. Nothing is never right. That's the wrong kind of folk because if you hear that mess, it's coming up out of your mouth. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if you're talking a bunch of negativity and all of that, that's what's in you. You can say, hey, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and all that, or you want to, but if you're complaining and that, that's the mess that's in you, all that negativism. That's why you're not advanced and move no further than you've been. But is if you will begin to move by faith, and that one that you're looking at say, oh, you know, they crazy over there. Stay away from them. They don't fool with nobody. Yes, they do. They just be with the people that God put them with. Because they ain't got time for a lot of that negative stuff. They know God taking them somewhere, and they trying to get there, and they not going to let your mouth block them. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. If I associate with folk that is dream killers, my dream won't even get past my few minutes of meditating on I got to get around other folk that dream and got some kind of vision. You see, when they was in that wilderness with that manna, which represented what is it? Because they ain't really know what it was. They ain't seen no manna before. But God sent it for food for them. And so since they didn't know what it was, they was in an uncertain state. God sends you to a church, praise God, and you're part of the church. You got a decision to make. Do I launch on to the vision of the ministry where God placed me and I move forward with it and help advance it and attach to that? Or do I say, hmm, I'm going somewhere else because what they doing, I don't know what they doing over there. You're going to miss what God has for you because you're out of place. And you can run to a hundred different churches if it ain't where God placed you because you were not comfortable. You'll get along, but you're not going to walk into the abundance that he desired for you because you're looking for glamour, excitement, 
because sometimes all the messages, they ain't going to be a, a run around the church and a jump over the bench and all that kind of type of mess. Sometimes it's got to hit you right where you are so you can think and see yourself. It's got to become uncomfortable to make you do something. And one of the best examples I can think of in the natural is when a woman pregnant and the time progress along, when it's getting close to that birthing time, she gets uncomfortable. And when them pains start kicking, it's like, get me to the doctor or to the hospital or wherever the baby gonna be delivered. And when she get there, she want them to hurry up and find them painkillers. So she can get as much pain so she don't have to endure a lot of pain. My wife, a prime example, get me my pain medicine because I don't want to feel it. Jesus, when we get uncomfortable, he's trying to get us to get to him. Because what we need is in him. He and his word, they are one. So we get that word, we got what we need. Now, if we exercise that word, things will begin to turn. But we must act on the word in faith. That discomfort causes the fruit. When them pains start, that's a sign that the baby is about to come. And that's what was expecting the whole time. And once that pain starts increasing, the next thing you know, baby is right there. And when the baby come forth, all the pain they went through, they realized the pain was there, but now they so glad to see this baby deliver because they know in just short order, I'll be back to our, like a feeling like I need to be. I won't be experiencing all this pain and discomfort. But discomfort brings forth fruitfulness. Because if you're comfortable, you ain't going to do nothing now. God makes us uncomfortable, so we'll step up to the next place. Think about it. You ain't never done nothing until you got tired of where you were at. That's the way God operates. As the choir prepares to come, just understand that you're just at the point of your crossover or transition. But that discomfort and uncertainty is going to be what will cause you to be fruitful. But you got to act by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Lord. What I feel, what I see may be real, but it's irrelevant to what God says when it's contrary. Yes, Lord. For I walk by faith and not by sight. He's God. I'm the servant. And the servant does not tell the master what to do, but the master gives order to the servant. And as the servant, I obey the orders, and if I obey the orders, I get the rewards of the benefit that the master has waited. When we walk according to God's word, it's his timing, not our timing, but as he promised them they was going to the promised land, the children got to the promised land. No, some of them died along the way because they were too stubborn. They weren't going to change. Same thing with the church today. You got some folk ain't going to change. They say, yeah, what you say sound good. But child, this is the way mama did it. Grandmama did it. Great grandmama did it. This is the way we used to do it. I ain't getting with all that new stuff. That's fine. God will leave you right there where you're at, sitting right there. But the folk that will get with it, you'll see them advance and doors begin to open. Don't get upset. They're just following what God is doing. Just because it's uncomfortable doesn't mean that it's not of God. As a matter of fact, a lot of times it is of God because he's trying to show you it's time to move. I'm ready for you to cross over. You stayed there long enough. Get on over on another. I got some more for you. But if you satisfy where you're at, he'll leave you sitting right there and then he'll get the next one that will listen. Praise God. 
you may come at this time, anyone, if you're outside of the family of God and you want to receive the word of God because your salvation is based on the faith in what the Lord has already done. It says, for by grace are we saved and not of works. He's gonna but if we believe that Jesus died for us, rose again, shed his own blood, and ask us to receive his gift Don't of salvation by God. faith, and because of his Lord, grace, he will receive us you. into his family. He's not because we deserve it, but because of his grace and his mercy, we trusted in the death and resurrection of his son Jesus. He's able. And because Jesus shed his blood once and for all, we can be a part of God's family. So it's all by faith. Because you ain't going to feel like you're saved. All you're going to feel like is where you are right now. But it ain't based on feeling, it's based on faith. And you must know that because the devil specializes in feelings to keep you from walking into what the Lord has in store for you. If there's any prayer requests at this time as we prepare to go into our, our prayer, you may let those requests be made known at this time. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. That's an act of faith that you let your request be made known unto the Lord. And he's not confused with everybody making their request at one time. Cynthia Anderson. Praise God. The body of Christ, true faith, praise God. Praise God. Able. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for the word. Father, we thank you that as we are at our point of transition or crossover, Lord, that you allow us by faith to take that step over into that that you have all promised and that we will give your name the praise and the glory for it. Lord, as your word have instructed, we have let our prayer requests be made known unto you. And Father, as we have made known our request, Father, we ask that you would receive that request and that it aligns itself with your word. And to be sure, God, that it is in line with your word, we yield that request that you might do what you will as you will with that request. But our trust and our faith is in you. Out of obedience to thy word, we let you know what we want and according to what our request was. But God, we understand that it's according to your will and because our faith and trust is in you, we say, Father, you may take our request and do what you will as you will because you see beyond what we can see and you know the appointed time to grant that request. But while you're yet working, let me be faithful in declaring what your words say. Let me be faithful in giving your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Let me be grateful for the progress that I'm seeing and in experiencing. And even for the progress that I don't see. But because I believe what you say, let my spirit be encouraged that I will continue to speak forth what your word declares. For it's by faith that I walk and not by sight. Let me watch my words and speak what you say. And give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. Lord, just continue to unfold that that you're doing in our lives. Continue to guide our steps. And as you are guiding our steps, let us be sensitive to your Holy Spirit so that as you prompt us and speak to our spirit, God will know which way to step. Even when we don't understand it, we'll step in because we trust you. 
And we thank you, Lord, that thank as we Lord. obey and walk according to thy word, that you will receive the glory mm -hmm. and the honor. That your name will be magnified. Mm -hmm. But you have magnified it above thy word. And Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we appreciate who you are. Because of who you are makes you worthy by yourself. Oh, we're grateful for all that you do. The small as well as the great things. We're grateful. But because of who you are, that makes you worthy right by yourself. Just as Joshua, when he spoke to the commander of the army of the Lord, and he asked him, he says, since you're the commander of the Lord, and you said that you are on neither side, but as the commander of the Lord's army, you were there to do the will that the Father sent you to do. So what is it that the Lord is speaking to me? And Joshua fell down and began to worship. Praise God. Let us begin to worship the Lord as he's beginning to show us what we need to do and where we need to step and let him know that we trust him by giving him all the worship and all of the praise and being willing to set aside our own understanding but lean upon your understanding and your word for you and your word they are one and if we walk according to that word we will see things turn around because you're not a man that you should lie. Every word that you spoke, you are able to perform. And it gives you great pleasure to fulfill your word in the lives of your people. But all you're looking for is a people that would trust yes. in you and your word. For they are one that it may bring glory and honor unto you. We thank you for all that you have done, yet done, and all that you're about to do. Yeah. It is so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to thy name. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.